Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end, we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I am going to do this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it together. I answer every single comment, so please ask a question or let me know your thoughts. The company we're going to look at is 26, and this is a global leader in engineered materials. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $4.8 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. Let's see what they're trading at. 46.38, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows, and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's exactly what we're doing in this video. And now I'm gonna pull their actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And we also need the net income for the model. The net income is a profit and loss for the business. And I'll also put four years of that into the model. And then the revenue, which are the sales for each year. And let's take a quick look at the numbers. So you can see the sales are increasing pretty steadily every year, and it was a really big jump from 2019 to 2020. Although they had negative net income in 2020, which isn't good, but positive free cash flow. Let's look at a capital structure. We need to figure out the interest they pay in our debt. That's $89 million. And let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet, go to liability section. So current debt is debt due within 12 months at $69 million. Long-term debt is debt due after 12 months, that's $2.2 billion. Interest payments on debt is tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. Since they had a loss in 2020, let's use the 2019 number. Income of $128 million and income taxes of $21 million. So the effective tax rate is 17%. The cost of debt is 3.3%. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a beta of 1.3, so the stock moves a little more than the market. We also need some more information from the balance sheet. We need the current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. The current assets are 1.8 billion. And that's $493 million of cash, $598 million in net receivables, and $619 million of inventory. We also need the current liabilities to calculate the current ratio. That's $673 million. That's $69 million of current debt, $268 million of accounts payable, and $310 million of accrued liabilities. We need their... Stockholders equity to calculate some ratios later. That's two billion dollars equity is total assets minus total liabilities They don't have a breakdown of that Let's go back to the income statement and get their operating income We need the operating income to calculate the interest coverage ratio later Let's look at a capital structure cost of debt is 3.3 percent weight of debt is 52 percent cost of equity is 48 percent weight of equity is 12.3 percent and the WAC is 7.6%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. That's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $3.2 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. That's here in green. We get a value of the company of $3.2 billion. We divide that by 103 million shares. We get an intrinsic stock price at $31. It's trading at $46, so it's trading at a 52% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $39, so they're also saying the stock is a sell. Let's see where it's been trading at. So it looks like it's been kind of up and down all over the place, and coronavirus hasn't really affected the stock. It seems like it's almost at an all-time high. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, good price to sales, good price to book. Negative PE because that's stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, therefore they have negative PE. 
Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, there are 2.0. So investors are paying $2 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, there are 2.3. So investors are paying $2.30 for $1 book value. Good current ratio, bad interest coverage ratio, and bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income in 2020, so therefore they have negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they cannot cover their interest payments, which means they need more debt. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I did a video on Keysight Technologies, which is in the same industry as 26. And Keysight has a better PE, although 26 is better in price to sales and price to book, but Keysight has better in everything else, which includes current ratio, ROE, debt, and market cap. So let me know what you think of this company and think of this industry. Leave a comment. I'll answer your comment. Thanks for watching.